in this video here, we're going to take a look at goodness of fit. So goodness of fit looks at measuring how well an observed frequency distribution matches to a known probability distribution. And to help illustrate this concept here, let's think about rolling a six sided dice. And let's imagine we roll this dice 180 times here. And this is what we get. So N here is the number that we land on. So we've got one, two, three, up to six here. And the observed value then, well, this is how many times we get that number. So we get 35 ones, 32s, so on and so on, right? Now, if we have a fair six sided dice here, we would expect, in theory anyway, that the numbers will all appear the same number of times. So for example, if we roll the dice 180 times, just as we've done here, we would expect to see each number 30 times. And this now is where we will use goodness of fit to assess our observed values. So for the measure of goodness of fit here, this is given by the following result. So as you can see here, we get x squared. Now this x squared is what we actually call our chi-squared value. So our chi-squared value here is equal to the summation from i equals 1 to n. So we take the summation then of our observed value minus our expected value. We then square that difference here, as you can see, and then we divide by the expected value. So as we've just mentioned then, oi here, so o subscript i is the observed frequencies and e subscript i is the expected frequencies. Now you can also use the following alternative result here for the measure of goodness of fit. So again, we get x squared here. So this is our chi squared value. And again, this is equal to the summation from i equals one to n. This time now of the observed value squared divided by the expected value squared. And then we subtract n here where n is our sample size. Now it is worth pointing out that the first result is given in the form of the book. However, the second result is not given and therefore you will have to memorize this result if you'd like to use it. So that's a very kind of quick introduction here to goodness of fit. However, goodness of fit is very much an introductory kind of chapter or topic here to the kind of wider topic of chi-squared tests. Okay, so what we're going to do here then is take a look at one practice question here for goodness of fit. Let's take a look then at this practice question here. So for this question, then we have Mark who rolls a six sided dice 108 times to establish whether or not the dice is fair. The results of the rolls are as follows. So we can see that here in the table below. So N here, that is the face that the dice lands on or what side it lands on. So we can get one, two, three, four, five, and six there. And then the observed values here in the row underneath, that's how many times we see that side or face of the dice. So for example, we get 35 ones, 32s, so on and so on here. So to start off with then for part A here, it asks us to state suitable null and alternative hypotheses. So I do appreciate that within this video here, in the introduction to goodness of fit, we didn't actually mention anything to do with hypothesis testing. And the reason for that is because we're going to look in a little bit more detail at hypothesis testing then within the next video. Okay, and chi-squared test in a little bit more detail in that video. But I do think it's worth being aware of what the null and alternative hypotheses look like for goodness of fit. So let's state then suitable null and alternative hypotheses then for this experiment here. So this is for part A. So to start off with, then we have H0 here. That is our null hypothesis. So H0 then. Well, what we're saying here is that the observed data are drawn from a discrete uniform distribution. So the observed data, I'll write this down in full. So the observed data are drawn from a discrete uniform distribution. From a discrete uniform distribution here. Okay. So that's H0, that is the null hypothesis there. And we also need the alternative hypothesis here, so that is H1. So for H1, then we are just basically saying the opposite to this here. So for H0, we said that the observed data are drawn from a discrete uniform distribution. So for H1, then we are saying that the observed data are not drawn from a discrete uniform distribution. So again, let's just write that down in full here. So the observed data are 
and not drawn. from a discrete uniform distribution. Okay, like so. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution to part A there. That is the null and alternative hypotheses then for this experiment here. Now for part B then, let's just write this down here. So for part B then, it asks us to calculate x squared here, the chi-squared value for the observed data here. So let's just state the result then that we need for the x squared value here, the chi-squared value. So x squared here, that is equal then to the summation. So this is the summation then of the observed values minus the expected values. We square this here and then we divide by the expected values. Okay, like so. So what I need here then is basically an extra row. You can do this as two rows if you want to. So what I could do here is put the expected values. So expected here, which I'll do just so it's clear what's going on here. So I've got the expected row here. Now clearly, if we roll the dice 108 times and each face has a 1 in 6 chance then, if it's a fair dice, we're going to see each number 30 times in theory, right? So the expected values here will be 30 for each one. So I'll just put these down dead quick, like so. And now for the second row here then, we're looking for this here. Okay, so I'll do that underneath them. So I've got OI minus EI divided by EI again, like so. So what am I doing here then? Well, clearly for the first one then we do 35 minus 30, so that's the observed minus the expected, so 35 minus 30, we then square that number, so 35 minus 30 gives me 5, 5 squared is 25, and then we divide it by the expected again, so 25 over 30, that is the same as 5 over 6 there, okay, so I'll just box this off here basically, so we get 5 over 6 there, let's keep going here, and clearly for the second one, nice and straight forward, 30 minus 30 gives me 0, so no matter what we do to so that 0 here, we will always get the 0 here, Okay, we then got 23 minus the 30 here, so 23 minus 30, square that number and then divide by 30 here, and what we get then is 49 over 30, so 49 over 30 there, keep going here, 28 minus 30, square that and then divide by 30 again, and we get 2 over 15, 35 and 30 again, so we've already done that, we get 5 over 6, and then finally here, 29 and 30. So 29 minus 30 gives me um, minus 1. We square that, and then we divide that by 30 here. So what I get then is 1 over 30 there. Okay. So we've got all the values that we need here. So now to find x squared here, our chi squared value, all we do is we sum these values here. Okay. So in that case then, chi squared here, our chi squared value, that's equal then to the summation here of these values. So I've got 5 over 6. Obviously, if I add 0, it won't affect this. So 5 over 6 plus 49 over 30. 49 over 30 plus 2 over 15. Plus 5 over 6. Plus 5 over 6 there. And then finally, plus 1 over 30. Okay, and if we evaluate this here, you can either give it as an exact answer, so I would get 52 over 15, or we round it to say three significant figures here, we get 3.47. Okay, so there we have it. So like you can see, the actual process here of calculating the um, x squared value or the chi squared value here is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's just a straightforward process. So truthfully, nothing too in interesting here but hopefully you have found this video helpful. Okay, so there we have it. So that brings us to the end of this video here on goodness of fit.